Hey guys, it's been a few weeks since my last unboxing video and as you can see I've accumulated some more packages so I think it's time for another one. Sorry about the background noise, there's some construction going on across the street and I've got a generator running. Now these first two I actually got a while ago and I've already opened but I forgot to include them in a video so I figured what the heck why not show them in this one. What's in them is knobs. The set on the left, I believe I got from a Video Karma member who had a part out a Motorola combo set, early combo set. It just so happens to have the same knobs as some of their other models. In particular, the VT105, I think it's called, and the VK106, both of which I have. So although I already do have some knobs, for both of the sets, they, neither one has a good, complete matching set. For example, this guy, I believe, was missing one or two knobs when I got it, and uh, I've replaced them, but the colors don't match too well. So, oops, now I can use these. Also, when I got these, there's something I hadn't realized. So you can see now that the fine-tuning fell out is that there's a felt ring inside. That's missing from both of my other sets, so it was good to, to see these just for that fact. So right now i got this knob pushed in pretty far, and I should actually be out further than there should be felt in between, which will help it uh, rotate more easily, because with it pushed in this far, it's really hard to get a grip on it. And uh, my VK106 actually has an uh, even more mismatched set of knobs, so between what I've got and what I just picked up, I should be able to get two complete, nice, matching sets of knobs. Here's a look again at the rest of the Motorola knobs. And uh, they also came with more felt inserts. So, that was a nice little score. Alright, now the other box is something very similar, just a different brand. These are Admiral knobs. As you know, if you've been watching my videos, I've got a lot of Admiral TVs. Just a couple right here. Blonde. There's mahogany. Now the darker wood ones and the Bakelite ones tend to have these brass um, brass inserts over the plastic knobs, whereas some of the other models do not. The brass ones I find are harder to come by, so I saw somebody selling a set on eBay, and I believe I was the only bidder. I figured why not? They're reasonably priced. The only question is will this brass polish up nice. These are just brass plated usually and can we polish them up so much before you break through to the base metal. But uh, I've seen a whole lot worse clean up real nice so I'm hoping I can get at least a couple if not four nice brass knobs out of the deal. And got some more of the inner knobs too. Alright so that is it for knobs. Next up is something a little different. It's not a TV. It's not a radio. It doesn't have any vacuum tubes in it. But it does run on electricity. It does have a light bulb in it. It's got a motor. And I may have just given it away. Yet, we'll see in a moment. Survive the journey. Inside's uh, dislodged a little bit. Alright, what this is is a West Clock Moonbeam Clock. Made in the 50s, I believe, and maybe into the 60s. This one's a little bit rough, but I knew that to begin with. I got it inexpensively, and it's got a uh, damage case. But I don't really care that much about that because I've already got several others. And I think I showed them in an old video way back when. It's still up on my channel. I've got parts of at least three, maybe four others. My goal is just to get one complete working unit with a certain face style, which is not this. They came in at least three styles. Two brown and one uh, off-white. 
The one I really want to get working is with the earlier style. It has a different a numeric font to it. But this one supposedly works well. So I wanted the mechanism out of it. As I said, the uh, Bakelite cabinet is damaged. Now there are reproductions of this. Sultan made one oh, maybe in the 80s or 90s. And I used to have one of those until it died. And those were pretty good. They looked rather similar to these. They got the dimensions pretty close. But of course it was solid state and modern. Now the reason they call these moonbeams is that when the alarm goes off you don't hear a buzz at first. There's a light bulb inside here and it starts uh, pulsing. And with this nice translucent yellow bakelite it makes a nice uh, makes a nice yellowish glow to it. After about 10 or 15 minutes of that then a buzzer goes off. Now if you're a light sleeper like myself that is enough to wake me up. Uh, other people I know when I mention that mechanism they, they just laugh like there's no friggin way that would wake me up. Well it works for some people and uh, they, they promoted that as like a nice natural healthy way to wake up in the morning. So I'm gonna get this up in a workbench in a moment and see about the mechanism. A little concerned that it got so cocked in here during shipping. Hopefully it's still okay. Now there is a more modern reproduction I believe you can still buy from L.L. Bean and I have one of those I'll show you in a moment. Oh, there we go. And you see, you'll see how crappy it is compared to the real deal. <clears throat> okay so on my left is the L.L. Bean version. Notice it's still running even though I've unplugged it. That's because there's a battery inside to keep the clock running if power goes out, which is a nice feature, but let's look at the things they didn't get right. So, they got the brass band too thick. The overall dimensions are wrong. It's taller than the original. Color's wrong. It's kind of a sickly eh, pale yellow rather than this nice orangish beeswax kind of color. What I really, really hate is they put his new snooze button on top, which is fine. So did Salton, but Salton just had a subtle little button. They had to print snooze on the top, <laughs> which uh, really ruins the look, I think, because it's just so visible on top. If you can't figure out uh, what a snooze button is, I mean, it should be pretty obvious to anybody that's had an alarm clock before. And uh, there's a backlight, which is just like four white LEDs behind it. It looks pretty crappy. And of course the light in here is nowhere near as nice as the original, which is a 25 watt incandescent bulb. And for all that, I think these are like 65 bucks or something, whereas I got this for about 20. And you can get uh, nicer examples that are unbroken. Uh, 30, 40, maybe 50 bucks. Take your chance on whether they're working or not. These used to be uh, scarcer, or maybe not scarcer, but certainly a lot more expensive. Back when I was first looking at these in 2006, 7, uh, it, they were about twice what they are now. So if you're interested in getting one, it seems like a good time to check out uh, eBay. Alright, let's take a quick look inside and see. Rooms. Easy to get these open. It's just uh, three screws in the bottom. You gotta do this to change the light bulb. The inside, it's, I don't know, I don't know what this is. It might be some type of translucent bake light. And then they paint it white in some areas so the light doesn't shine through as much as it does. You know where the light bulb is? Hey, hey, this came with a bulb. Nice. Oh, I said 25 watt earlier, I think. It's actually 15 watt. Oh, and I can see why this came loose. It's missing a screw right here. That should have secured it to the base. So you see these fronts are just 
piece of paper so they're pretty fragile. They usually get torn up when people take them apart to replace the bulb and also these hands should be luminous and that tends to flake off. I'm not sure why the second hand would have gotten so mangled though. No reason anybody should have been poking around inside there. And as for the mechanism, well, see, it's, I believe it's an asynchronous uh, AC motor. Keep back your time because it just goes off the 60 hertz AC line signal. It looks all pretty clean, so I'm just going to give this a go. Original cords in fine condition. I'll see if I can get the alarm to trip too. Not the most precise thing when you set the alarm, and it's uh, it goes off uh, every 12 hours. It's not a 24 hour clock. Let's see, we're at nine o'clock. The alarm. I bet they tested this because the alarm is set for nine, and the hands are on nine. So just back things off a little. Turn it on. Running. It's a nice little sound here. Maybe a little oil. See the gears going around inside there. And something I've never quite understood in these. There's a red dot up there, and on the back it says to reset signal tilt backwards. Uh, I'll have to dig up the instructions for this. Alright, so I got this pulled back. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So that's what happens when the alarm goes off at first. So would that wake you up next to your nightstand? Well, it wakes me up. So, uh, if I can just transplant an outer case, I know I have several that don't have any cracks, and maybe swap out the face. Let's go with this one. Let's see if I can advance the clock a little more. Buzzer to trip. Well, that's interesting. The flashing pattern changed. Maybe that's more urgent. Uh, or it's just a filament uh, <laughs> you're about to give out or something. Yeah, the buzzer didn't trip. I've seen some too where the um, light bulb works and the buzzer doesn't. But honestly, I don't even care if the alarm doesn't work so much because I'll rely on uh, something else to wake me up. Like, um, uh, like my phone. I just really like the look of these clocks. Alright, let's get through the rest of these quick. This should be some tubes. Some 6BG6s to be exact. These are used in almost every TV I've restored. At least all the larger types with flybacks from the 40s. Alright. A nice packing job. I made a little compartment for each tube it looks like. I believe they said these were used, but I'll test the good. Reasonably priced, got four of them. So, check those out later. Oh, this 
should be familiar to you again if you've been watching any of my videos in particular if you watched the last Erky video I did the Erky Radio Fest where I left something behind <laughs> yay thanks Jim he sent me back my Syncor CR70 and uh, actually no I haven't missed it too much because luckily I haven't needed it but I'm sure I will in the near future alright so got this trusty CRT tester back nice job of packing it alright now finally finally we get to this which is also a piece of Suncor equipment but this is not one that I owned and forgot somewhere this is a new item although not so new I actually already have one of these but the one I have doesn't work right I believe it's got a bad um, power transformer it's a Suncor TC162 Mighty Might tube tester. I believe it's the last one Suncor made. Sorry if that was off frame. Alright, so uh, it seems like I might as well get this on a workbench and check out those six BG6s I just picked up. The 6BG6 is tested okay, and now what I've got in here is a 6K7 from when I restored my Filco 387, the one that showed grid leakage as it warmed up. I'm checking the grid leakage right now, and it's in the good, but notice it's starting to creep up as the tube warms up. Prior to getting this tube tester, I did not have one that was capable of checking for grid leakage on this type tube. My Cardmatic is great for checking for leakage, but I don't have a card for this tube. And my Hickok 600B doesn't have a grid leakage tester. Well, check that out. So, I'm very happy to have this tester. It seems to be working great. Handy to keep, uh, to hang on to bad tubes just for doing a test like this. If I didn't have a tube that had grid leakage, um, you can go through the instruction manual or the calibration manual and they show you how to simulate grid leakage with a really high valued resistor, like 50 mega ohms, and you rig up an octal socket and you connect the grid to the cathode or something like that to simulate grid leakage. But I'm glad I hung on to this tube and now, once again, verifying that this tube has a really high grid leakage. And that the tube tester is detecting it properly. That's going to be it for this edition of Friday Night Unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it.